Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to provide you with an overview of interest-bearing receivables. So when we think of interest-bearing receivables, typically what we are going to think of is some sort of um, written arrangement that specifies terms of, of, of repayment and of interest accrual. Um, one of the most common ones that you'll see in business is a note receivable. So the name for note receivable comes from a promissory note. And basically, this is a written promise to pay a debt at a specific time or over a period of time. So it could say, you owe this amount of money in three years. Or it could say, you owe this amount of money payable in equal monthly installments for three years, right? But it is a written arrangement. Um, and you typically are going to use this when you lend money outside of your normal course of business. So when you're simply selling product to customers and customers say, hey, charge my account, I'll pay you later, that's accounts receivable. You don't typically sign formal notes for that. But if you need to make an unusual lending arrangement with another party, you would go ahead and prepare a debt instrument called a note um, that would specify the various terms you need. And, and, and as part of that, there's typically interest involved. Um, notice I also have on here debt investments. So debt investments typically involve the bonds of companies. And so to the extent that you purchase the debt instruments of other companies, rather than their stock, you're buying their bonds, um, that is typically going to create um, a, a receivable on your books for interest that racks up as, as part of making that debt investment in other companies. So two ways that you could essentially accrue receivable interest um, as a result of, of doing business. All right, let's talk about the components of these various debt instruments. So um, you'll see different names for different pieces of the components, but they all serve basically similar purposes. So you might see um, in the case of a note, you might see the word the maker of the note. In the case of, say, um, a bond, a, 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 a that's traded in the open market, it would be the issuer of the bond. Um, but essentially, this is the writer of the debt instrument. Or as you see, I have in parentheses here, the borrower, right? So the person who is borrowing the money, that's the person who either makes the note or issues the bond. Then you have the payee or the investor. This is obviously the other party to the, to the agreement, the lender, right? So in this case, it is the, the person who, on the note, it says, this is the party to be paid. Or in the case of, say, the bond, this is the party purchasing the debt investment in the open market. You'll have what's known as the principal or the face value. This is the amount that is loaned or borrowed, right? Depending on which side of the transaction you're looking at this from. Um, in the case of a note, it's typically referred to as the principal. In the case of, say, a debt investment, a bond, it's typically referred to as the face value of the, the bond. You'll have the interest rate. So the interest rate is going to establish the additional amount owed by the borrower on a periodic basis. So you have the principal amount, which is just, this is what I'm borrowing. However, as part of borrowing that money, every, say, month or quarter or year, there is going to be an associated interest accrual that the borrower will have to pay the lender. And the lender is going to essentially uh, record some receivables for that interest. And then ultimately, you have a, um, a, a due or maturity date. So it might be called a due date, might be called a maturity date, again, depending on whether you're looking at a note or a bond. Um, and basically, this is just the date on which the principal will actually get um, paid in full, right? Either paid, period, if it's just a one-time payment, or paid in full if it's a series of, of payments. So that's it. No accounting in this one. Um, really just the overview to get you comfortable with what exactly are interest-bearing receivables. They come in the form of notes. They come in the form of debt investments. Um, they are written. They do specify all those terms um, that I've laid out on the prior slide, things like who owes who, what amount of money, over what time, at what interest rate, so forth and so on. Um, and and I'll, I'll show the accounting for this in, in another video, but hopefully this at least gets you comfortable with, okay, what distinguishes these instruments from, say, something more casual like accounts receivable. Um, with that said, I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.